Born on May 30, 1947 in Stahagen, Germany, his mother was a cleaning lady and his father was a truck driver. Eric's father would leave for extended periods of time to indulge in affairs, leaving Eric to be the head of the household. Even though Eric's father was absent a lot, he did teach his son one valuable lesson, and that was to create good professional connections. At seven, he would often be found at the local printing press, marveling at the miracle of printing, amazed at the body text laying perfectly on a clean sheet of paper. Just before entering high school, his family moved to Bonn, where coincidentally they ended up living next to another printing press. By the age of 12, the printer gave Eric his first printing press. In high school, Eric started writing for his school magazine because he already had some experience with printing. After graduating from high school, Eric worked at a newspaper called the Tagspiel for two years, where he honed the craft of setting advertisements. This is also where he began to form opinions about type, especially Candida and Bodoni, which, because they were used at the type tag spiel, he formed a deep dislike for. In 1967, Eric began to study art history and English at the Free University of Berlin. While he was studying there, he began to amass a large collection of printing presses, either because he found them or because his friends would bring them to him. Between 1976 and 1981, Eric would be moving back and forth between Berlin and London. This is also where he ended up meeting Florian Fischer, who would later become one of his partners at Meta Design. In 1978, he decided to go freelance, and at this point, things really changed for him. He became a consultant for the agency Wolf Owens, where he and Dieter Hall would take on clients like Audi, VW, and Faber-Castell. He would also begin to design typefaces for the company Berthold. He would become a co-founder of the Type Directors Club, which is now known as the Topographic Circle, and in 1979 be a co-founder of Meta Design, where the concept was Design for Design. In 1983, Eric was working on the Deutsche Post redesign. At the time, they were using Helvetica, and Eric adamantly argued that it was not right for the purpose. At the time, he was working on a typeface called PT55, but unfortunately, Deutsche Post never used it. This was actually a blessing, because later on, he ended up digitizing that, called it FF Meta, and it would become a very successful digital typeface. Even at the time, he was a forward thinker, already thinking about the Apple computer as a typesetting machine. In the early 1980s, Eric noticed there was a lack of consistency in the Berlin public transportation system. He brought it to their attention, but unfortunately they rebuked him. It wasn't until after the reunification of Germany when a man named Conrad Lawrence understood that consistent design would make navigation much more successful. In proceeding with the design, Eric didn't rely on scientific research. He relied on designer's instinct. He understood that people in that situation were more preoccupied with their day-to-day -day concerns. With that in mind, it was determined that the design should be fairly minimal, using specific proportions and iconic elements that would be easy to recognize. They incorporated the already existing color scheme of the U-Bahn by incorporating them into a system of arrows and pictograms and other forms like bars and squares used for the signage. He will be the first one to admit that his color sense is not the best, but what he does know is that color gives emotion to design. To make the design even more cohesive, he suggested that all the subway cars be painted yellow. He then created a typeface called FF Transit for their exclusive use. In 1996, a fire at Dusseldorf Airport left them needing a completely new system of signage. There was just one problem, it needed to be done in six weeks. Eric was commissioned for the job and what was a one-time failed project for a pharmaceutical company now allowed the turnaround time on this project to become a reality. The typeface was called FIDA and it was based on FF Info. It was designed to be read at extremely small point sizes, take up little space and be able to be used in a backlit situation. Due to the slight rounding on its ends, it was perfect for this. Its specific design lent itself well to both negative as well as positive uses and therefore a perfect fit for all the applications the airport would ever need. In 1989, Eric and his wife Joan founded a company, Font Shop, to be a publishing house for digital fonts, which at the time was a really new concept, and one that we now benefit from and don't even give much thought to. Keep in mind this was before the advent of the internet, so all sales were done through order forms and delivered by way of floppy disk. In creating the corporate identity for Font Shop, Eric and Alex Brenzik 
designed the logo. The decision to use black and yellow was in part because Eric never used many colors in any of his designs, and also it was thought that by using two colors it would be a good representation of the binary way that digital information was processed. Shortly thereafter, they partnered with Neville Brody to create Font Font, which is a typeface library that has over 4,000 fonts with 400 font families. The fonts it publishes carry an FF in front of them to denote that they are published by Font Font. For example, FF Meta, FF Scala, etc. There's a board of members which reviews fonts that have been submitted by designers that wish to have their designs included in the library and at an interval of every six months, new fonts are published by the company. When asked if he is a graphic designer, Eric will respond that he prefers to be called a type designer, and he makes the following distinction between the two. A typographic designer starts from the word up, and a graphic designer from the picture down. When talking about typeface design, Eric likens it to writing music, but he doesn't write the song. People who write are writing the song. He's merely creating the sound, it's equivalent to being either a guitar or a trumpet within a piece of music. Eric uses one of two methods to design a typeface. The first method, he starts by figuring out what the shape is going to be. He then sketches it, sketches a few letters. He says this defines the overall feel of the typeface. The second method, he refines a typeface that he believes will work for the client, but is either too old, too expensive, or is just lacking a particular characteristic. A good example of this method can be seen in the development of the font for Deutsches Bahn. He decided to use Saban as the base for the revision by first looking at it for a long time, then sketching it or tracing it. Then he likes to put it aside for at least a day or more. Then he redraws it from memory. Inevitably, it will never be the same as the original, and now he has a good start on a new design. In the case of DB, he collaborated with Christian Schwartz. They both made revisions and corresponded through email until he was satisfied that the new design had become something completely original. Eric Speakerman, topographer, information architect, entrepreneur, networker, speaker, professor, and author. He has been the recipient of numerous awards, the Garrett Nords Prize for Topography in 2003, German Design Award in 2007, and the Lifetime Achievement Award by the German Design Council in 2011. He was also a board member of ATIPL, the German Design Council, and held a position of President of the International Institute of Information Design. John Walters gave a speech at the 2011 Lifetime Achievement Award for Eric and mentioned that he kept on running into Eric, not literally, but it was through the legacy of his work. He decided that the I-74 publication would be named The Six Degrees of Eric Speakerman. Eric can be rough around the edges and a little cantankerous at times, but he loves the fact that the general public doesn't realize a design is his. The only time he cares that somebody knows about his design is if it's a client, because he believes they need to be told that a designer did the work and not a machine. This way they won't squabble so much when they need to spend some money on good design. When asked about his life's work, he would rather say it's not about the work. He quickly admits that he has done so few things by himself. If he has a legacy, what he believes is that it is his responsibility to make designers realize that design is always a team effort. There are no supermen or women, just smart designers that know there is no fault in being collaborative. There's no denying that his influences are far-reaching, and over the course of a long and still-going career, he has employed, influenced, and trained hundreds of people. Coming from a career that spans a period of time from pre-computer design to digital fonts and being at the forefront in taking on the design establishment, he now takes pleasure in going back to his roots. Recently, he has hosted an advanced letterpress workshop at his studio P89A in Berlin, where he is passing on the time-honored tradition of physically printing on paper with a traditional press. It feels like he has come full circle, and when one thinks about Eric Speakerman, his legacy will be that of a teacher or elder statesman that will hold all of us to the highest standards of design.